Subscribe, hit that bell icon and share this clip if you enjoy it. This is TRS Clips. I've had a very, for lack of a better word, tumultuous past, a tormenting past where I've had substance abuse in my life. I've been into drugs. I've been deeply into alcohol and gradually come out of that in my life. Uh, where, you know, I've really embraced the process of meditation and everything around it a lot more deeply at the age of 27. And I've also discovered this beautiful word that's always stayed with me, especially in this phase. The word is called sadhana. And sadhana basically means a discipline. And there are gifts at the end of a discipline, but that's not why you should do the sadhana. You should do the sadhana because eventually the result of discipline and sadhana is an easier life, is a more peaceful and... Uh, contentment filled life but I'd love for you to share some you know knowledge or wisdom about the concept of sadhana and how it applies to modern day humans especially young people are not willing to sacrifice to get to the next stage of life and I feel like people should read more about sadhana know more about sadhana just for their own self evolution so I'd love to know your opinion on it once one of my masters he was sharing a story of one young boy. He says, I'm going to do so much of tapasya and achieve the highest in shortest possible time. So Guru advised him, you must perform sadhana. You must embrace sadhana. So 10 years later, they meet. And uh, that so-called disciple was so happy and say, I'm so happy you advised me to embrace sadhana. Oh, great, great, great. And the Guru asks, what sort of sadhana you are practicing? He calls, sadhana, please come here. <laughs> he married a lady named sadhana. Anyway, this is a stupid joke. But sadhana is a word. It conveys so many things. That's something that you do to achieve. What is sadhana? Sadhya, what you want to achieve. Now, you in the beginning itself, you had asked me a question about God. What do you understand by God? Suppose a person says, I want to realize God. It's too subtle an idea. It's, it's very fancy to talk about God, but when it comes to, I want to realize God. It's like you're looking at 360 degrees without knowing where I am going, what God is. Sadhana is a process. You want to achieve something, right? What do you want to achieve? So immediate goal should be clear in our mind. And the highest goal need not be crystallized in your mind, but some direction has to be there in your mind that I want to go in this direction. Right? So now, having understood this much, if your goal is, okay, now at the moment, I am so much troubled, I'd like to get rid of this stress. So the goal becomes distressing yourself and you want to bring about some level of peace in your heart. Okay. Having achieved peace, You'll come up with something else. Oh, I want to go a little bit higher. You have understood that much. It is like, you know, when you are driving around the mountain during the winter days, early morning, and there's so much of, you know, this fog all around. You hardly see anything 10 feet away from you. But nevertheless, you continue your journey, right? And you go 10 feet and then you'll see another 10 feet, and you'll see another 10 feet, and that's how the journey continues until you reach the peak. But if you say, I'm not going to continue beyond this 10 feet because I don't see anything beyond 10 feet, then you are a failure. You have failed. Spirituality is also like that. Nothing will be clear to us on the journey on the first day. But as we move along, it reveals to us. Little by little, little by little. Why? As I was saying earlier, what is God to me? It is, to me, it's not more, it's not so important what is God. For me, what is important is 
how I can become godly, more compassionate, more loving. See? So my aspect of understanding of God is resonating with that entity we call love. How to arrive at it? So there's a whole exercise of spirituality if you look at it from one perspective. It is all about love. It is not the love people talk about in common parlour. It is something very different. As I was saying, pleasure, joy, bliss, they are different. Love is also different. For example, love between a couple versus love between a mother and a son or mother and a daughter. Right? It is different. Uh, affection that we have between friends. Maitri bhav, matru bhav, pitru bhav, guru bhav. All these uh, are given various names. But when it comes to God, very few people understand that. And I don't blame or criticize them because there is no way to feel that until we achieve that level. All the practices that we talk about, spiritual practices, it is only to come to that level of understanding and not just understanding, but becoming that. See, to me, becoming is more important so that you have become in the process love itself. You see, uh, Swami Vivekananda, he once said, purpose of all spiritual practices is only one. And that is to expand your available consciousness. This available consciousness that we all have, it is like a thin film of water sandwiched between two giant oceans. Can you imagine? Thin film of water, imagine it being sandwiched between Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. That's how our available consciousness is. And he says, I must be able to soar higher into the sky of super consciousness. And I must be able to dive deeper into the oceans of subconsciousness through the spiritual practice I'm indulging with. So the aspect of sadhana is evolutionary. Would you be happy uh, if I tell you, Ranveer, that you had a beautiful experience of samadhi and day after day you have the same experience? Mm. Would you be happy? No. I don't think so. Have you seen that movie? Uh, what was that movie where this uh, guy has the same experience day after Ground, day, day after day, Groundhog Day? day. Yeah. Huh? Oh, right. Uh, that, uh, right. Groundhog Day. Oh, my God. I mean, imagine his uh, frustration. Hmm. Uh, everything repeats, you know, every single day. And spiritually, during your sadhana, if you go on, I mean, experiencing the same thing again and again, I mean, there is nothing more frustrating than that. But I do find people... They say, oh, I was with this such and such a guru and I was in Mansarovar and I was in Kailash and I was, he touched me and then say, wow, you, I have elevated you. Elevation is not once, it is incremental. Purity is not once, it is incremental purity. Suppose God gives you a gift and say, Ranbir, I have totally purified your consciousness. I don't think you will recognize yourself. You'll go gaga in a sad way because you cannot tolerate hundred percent purity. It has this improvement of purity has to be incremental, gradual to the extent we can tolerate it. Got it. Right. So when we move from one chakra in in yoga, we often talk about chakra system, which is energy system. And we take a journey, especially with heartfulness, way with the heart. The reason is the three chakras which are below that, which are common with animals. Here begins humanity. We have to expand that. 
compassion, love, empathy, this part of this heart. And then we move on to another chakra, to the next level, to the next level, and it continues. And when you are at one particular chakra, you have some level of consciousness. And with Guru's help, who guides us in meditation with transmission, and transmission is very unique. It takes us deeper into our levels of samadhis, you know. The samadhi that you enjoy while you are at heart chakra is different from the samadhi you achieve at atma chakra or fire point or, or you know, so many chakras are there. Yeah. So it's evolutionary. Sadhana can be very joyful only when there is a change in consciousness all the time. Now for an experiment's sake, I mean to the audience who are listening, try this out. You meditate on the heart, thinking of presence of the divine principle, that my heart is an embodiment of the source of all that is divine. Make that thought and sit for meditation. Now, another form of meditation, the same thing they do, that same divine principle, the source of all that is divine is present in my heart, but you invoke this pranahuti transmission, which is available through heartfulness way. You compare the experiences. You know, in, you see, I, mean, I have a pharmacy background, uh, Ranbir. Whenever we have to research a new drug, it is compared with a placebo or compared with an existing, let us say if you are researching a painkiller, you are comparing with existing painkiller. Does my new molecule have lesser side effect than existing molecule or is it better in quickly relieving my pain than the previous one? Then this new entity will have a good market value. Right? What is happening today with Pfizer, COVID vaccine, right? or Bharat, or Serum Technologies, or Moderna, or you know, so AstraZeneca, so many are there. So we say how effective it is, and see if it has least amount of side effects. So any spiritual seeker trying to fulfill personal spiritual goal has to be very vigilant. He has to have a scientific approach that if I meditate just like that and if I meditate with this transmission in the heartfulness way, is it better? Does it give me a better experience? Then that is for you. Mm. So I urge that you must try it before you make a judgment. See? Yeah.